Hey guys, so today I'm gonna walk you through an entire quad and booty workout and also what I'm eating the entire day. If you enjoy it, make sure to subscribe and let's start with the video. So one of my all-time favorite exercises for quads are squats obviously and i personally I, I don't want to say i love to do barbell squats because i really do not love them but i usually do some barbell squats in the beginning of my workout you can also do smith machine squats or you can do hex squat machine squats or just dumbbell squats whatever squats you prefer pretty much i personally don't like the hex squat machine and i alternate between barbell smith machine and dumbbell squats we have four sets and i do six to eight reps aiming for eight reps but if you don't make it to the eight reps because you're using a heavy weight and you can only do six reps still perfectly fine you should always start your workout with an exercise where you want to get stronger on my quad day i usually start with squats sometimes i also do the leg press and when i do my hamstring day i like to start with hip thrusts so what I like to do before I start, I always do a little test, I didn't film it but I just use the barbell and then I do a few squats, see if it feels good and then I load the barbell with some weight. I start my first set usually with a light to moderate weight and then I increase the weight throughout the sets. One of my favorite tips for squats is when you have the barbell, number one, you want to have the barbell not on your neck, like not here on the neck where you have this bone, you want to have it like kind of underneath because if you have it on this bone you will notice that your squats are gonna hurt in your neck. And then make sure that you push your elbows back, like really engage your back and your core by pushing the elbows back and breathing in when you go down in the squat. I take the bar, elbows back, and then I go down. And until I go up, I don't breathe out. Because this makes sure that your core is engaged and that you don't hurt yourself. Also, a tip that I like for squats is don't go too low. I personally think when I'm going too low, because I just do not have that depth of the squats, I do get lower back pain. So you should be about a 90 degree angle. If you can go deeper than that, um, I'm very jealous. I personally cannot. But I feel like a 90 degree angle for me is perfect. When you're down at the position like the 90 degree angle, this is where you should feel your squat. This is the most important part of your squat. So I like to sit there for a moment, but for a few seconds, if you want to do that, these are the most vicious squats ever when you sit down and then you stay in that position for a few seconds and then go up again. Also a nice variation, I, I sometimes do, not a lot of times, because it hurts and I don't like it. But usually I just wait for a moment and when I push up, I make sure that I push with my heels and bonus tip is to push out with your knees so you make sure that your knees are not caving in. I personally sometimes use a lifting belt if I feel like I struggle a little bit with my form. I used it in the past when I had lower back pain and I also remove my shoes because my shoes have like a platform and it is like squishy so I remove them that I have full grip on the floor. When you're squatting make sure that you're not hip hinging like with an RDL. You basically sit down into a squat. When you do it in an RDL form it's, it's gonna hurt and when you go like too straight down it's also gonna hurt. So you pretty much just sit down like you would on a chair. If you want you can use a bench or something. I personally don't like to squat with a bench but you can use one because squatting is just pretty much sitting down. And then I just increase my weight throughout the sets when I feel like I can do it a day. And on that day when I was filming it, I even hit the PR, which I, I didn't know I could squat 70 kg, which is completely new for me. I know I should be able to squat it for a long time, but I just cannot. Uh, but I finally did it, which is very great because now I can aim for 80 kg. Yay! Next exercise is hip thrust and I am doing them today on the Smith machine. I personally like to have one day on a Smith machine and one day doing barbell hip thrust. If you don't want to do hip thrust twice a week, I totally get it. I personally don't mind it with the Smith machine. We have a hip thrust machine at my gym, but I don't like it. I feel like the belt, it's hurting my my hip area and we don't have this hip thrust setup um, so unfortunately I have to spend what feels like an hour to set up my hip thrust and remove them again and I only want to do this once a week and not twice a week so that's why I'm also using the smith machine because the setup is super easy it's super quick and I also feel like when I do barbell squats I'm gonna do smith machine squats I feel them very different so I like to do both and my tip for the smith machine hip thrust is to put the safety thing I, I 
I don't know what it's called. To not put it on the first level, but to put it on a second level because you can immediately lift up the bar and go straight into the exercise without having to push the bar up first and then losing a lot of your energy just by lifting up the bar from the very ground. Also making sure that um, with my feet I'm in a 90 degree angle, toes pointed out a little bit, my shoulder blades are on the bench and secure. More than a hip, what is it called? A little bit more than a shoulder width stance. And then you also breathe in, engage your core and then you breathe out at the top of the movement. Make sure to not overextend. I feel like this always happens to me. Also because a lot of people are always like, oh you're not doing this hip thrust to the full motion. But I feel like when I go too much, when I try too much to go to the top of the movement, I get lower back pain because I over arch, over extend. So what I like to do is I make sure that I just engage my glutes. If you feel like you have lower back pain, try to not push up too high. Next we have Bulgarian split squats. I personally do not like this exercise, but I pretty much do not like any single leg exercise. So sometimes I do them on a bench, sometimes I do them with a stepper, depending on the day. I like to do a variation of both. And on this day I did it with a bench. So I know there is this cool hack on the internet where you know how far you should stay away from the bench. I personally always just step forward and then do like a little like a, a tiny tip more with my toes I feel like that's the perfect stance for me because if I'm too far out I can feel my lower back as well you can do a little bit more narrow then it's more like quad focus but I like to be in the middle of narrow and wide stance I rest one of my feet on the bench and then I work and push only with my working leg I also like to use only one dumbbell I feel like I have more of a balance. I don't know, I just prefer it this way. I don't like to hold two dumbbells. I feel like it's easier with one dumbbell. And then I need lifting straps because I cannot hold it extremely heavy dumbbell. I also make sure to engage my core. Not overextend when you're going up, like locking your knee out. And I lean forward a bit, but only a bit because I feel like when you lean too far forward, which I also did in the past, also lower back pain. <laughs> I feel like I have all the tips on the lower back pain. I feel like I always do something where I get lower back pain. I'm like, oh, that's how you're supposed to do it, yeah. Also, with all single leg exercises, I highly recommend a great tip that I got is to always start with your weaker leg. There's always gonna be one leg that's gonna make the exercise even, even harder than it already is because your strong leg is already strong enough, you know, then it feels easier with the strong leg and then you're on the second leg oh my gosh this is so hard but if you start with your weak leg then the strong leg it's gonna be it's gonna be fine you know it's gonna be not it's gonna be not easy but it's it's gonna be fine game changer this is really changes for me also don't be discouraged if you cannot go down the same way with both legs i feel like one leg is super easy for me to go down and then the other leg is usually my right one which is also my weaker leg i do struggle to go as far down it does feel different i feel like now i don't have the problem as much but i used to have it a lot back in the day so yeah just make sure uh, so don't be discouraged if you feel like one side of your hip is a little bit stiffer than the other then we move on to the narrow leg press which i absolutely love i love doing the i i love the leg press i absolutely love the leg press because it can go so heavy that you contemplate your entire life not a lot can have on a leg press. I really, really do love going super heavy in the leg press. I also like to do different stances with the leg press, like a narrow stand, a normal stand, a wide stance, high stance, you know, all the stances pretty much. Um, except for single leg leg press. I usually, I don't do that. I don't do that anymore. I feel like I always get lower back pain. I don't know why, so I don't do it anymore. I know it's bad because you should always do these exercises only with one leg to balance it out, but I don't care. I'm not doing a one leg leg press anymore. <laughs> Maybe one day again. At the moment, I don't. Leg press, very important. Don't lock your knees out at the top. You don't have to go too far in. Like, you don't have to be like with your knees at your chest because I feel like that's what I always thought I need to do. But I feel like I can, I can feel the stretch better if I don't go too far to my chest and I also don't lift with my back. This is also a very very big tip. If you're lifting with your back or with your butt you're gonna feel it in your lower back. So make sure that you're really pressed against the seat and for me personally I do get this when I go too close to my chest. And also make sure that your knees are not caving in that they're 
push it out to ensure that you're not getting any knee pain and then you can go super heavy on your leg press have fun and don't worry <laughs> about any pain i remember doing a narrow stance for the first time and i was so blown away by it because i could feel my quads and my booty so long i was like oh my gosh <laughs> because i was always doing the normal leg press and i was like oh i should do maybe a different stance and then i did the narrow stance and i was like oh my gosh this is hurting and then for the last exercise we have leg extensions if you have knee pain and cannot do this exercise i totally get it i didn't do this exercise for over a year i think because i had such bad knee pain when i did it that i couldn't even drive i could barely drive my car avoid it if you get knee pain from it it's totally not necessary to do this exercise i just love to do it as a finisher now that i can do it if you cannot reach the handles on the leg extensions because i'm too short personally you can either have something like at your back you don't reach the thing maybe even like to extend like your hip thrust roller or what i like to do i hold on to my seat instead of the handles because I cannot grab the handles because I'm too small. That's a tip for my small girlies. When you do the exercise, also make sure that your back is against the seat and when you extend to the top, make sure that you really squeeze your quads. Hold it for a moment. You don't need to be like one, two, three. Just hold it for a moment, really feel it and then go down again. That's where your muscle is working. That's where the exercise is the hardest. You can also train your calves on that day. I know I don't, I don't remember in which video I said it, but I always, in some I always regret not training my calves. I don't have the time at the moment to train my calves. I don't even have time to do cardio or anything, which is very sad, but I'm glad I can make it to the gym. If you have time, you can train your calves on your quad day. This is something I would do if I had more time and more motivation to train my calves, but I obviously do not have that. So I skip my calves, like you shouldn't do it, but and that's the entire quad and glute day. I hope your legs and your glutes are on fire after this because mine were. Quickly having a pre-workout snack. Nothing fancy. This is just toast with some jam. And then I also have my little coffee. And I'm having a pre-workout before going inside of the gym because I just need my pre-workout. I cannot function. I cannot work out without my pre-workout. I'm having my breakfast and my lunch at work. I tried something completely new for breakfast again. I made some overnight oats, but I made them with Biscoff, like this lotus thingy. They look so good. I'm really, really curious how it's gonna taste because I love the spread so much and I obviously also love the biscuits. I mean, who doesn't? I don't know. And then for lunch, I have one of my favorite meal preps ever, which is just fried rice with frozen veggies so you don't have to cut anything and tofu and sweet chili on top and halloumi. to film that I had a snack in the afternoon. I was snacking on some mandarins, clementines, I'm not sure. I'm having a bunch of those at the moment because they're such a great snack and they also have a lot of vitamins so that you don't get sick. You're obviously not less hungry by snacking these but I think they help a little bit for you know a tiny bit of hunger and I also had <laughs> a little chocolate <laughs> from my advent calendar so time to make dinner I actually already started making it and I'm gonna make some soup I don't know I never had a proper soup face I also never had a proper smoothie face but this year I'm having both apparently <gasps> because I was always like I don't know I'm not so sure but only eating drinking liquid but we had a week of pumpkin cream soup a few weeks ago and I absolutely loved it so I was like I want to make some broccoli soup because it's probably my favorite I mean I also like pumpkin but yeah I really really like broccoli so we have a bunch <laughs> of broccoli because we're meal prepping this I have no idea how many portions this is gonna be a lot we have two pots here I already started sorting in some onions and now we're gonna add the broccoli have it a little bit 
sauteing, frying, and then we pour in the liquid, you know, just like soup, soup cubes, what are they called? These little things here. We have vegetable soup and then some croutons. This is just some basic toast, like white toast. I'm not someone who eats white toast or white bread or anything. I usually tend to have more like a corny bread, corny toast, but for croutons, I personally prefer the white one. And all I did with this is put a little bit of olive oil on top, a little bit of butter and a lot a lot of garlic powder i'm gonna make this in the oven it's so easy to make this in the oven and you don't need a pan because we already have like two pots three pots going on with the soup like the soup broth broth that's the word so it's nice if you have this in the oven cooking by itself and i also i'm gonna meal prep this for the entire week i have a second one of this and then i just reheat them in the air fryer and they get so crunchy and good i absolutely love it insane i fake tanned <laughs> soup is ready don't be alarmed by these five little pieces of croutons i have a whole <laughs> a whole bowl of croutons but i don't want to put all of them in the soup and then they're you know mushy and squishy and i don't like it i want them to be crunchy it's finally dinner time i'm so excited i'm so hungry i'm so excited for soup Like I said in my previous video, I usually have a snack in the afternoon, like some sort of protein yogurt, protein pudding, or I'm having a snack in the evening. Today I only have my clementines pretty much. I don't count that as a proper snack, but honestly I am too tired and it is way too late to make like a yogurt or something because I'm about to go to bed because I'm waking up at 5am and if you wake up at 5am you have to go to bed super early <laughs> and it feels like you don't have an evening at all. I have two of these little stars we bought them at the store they're like cinnamon christmas cookies they are so good if you have an aldi try and find them i'm just gonna have those instead of a yogurt i have so many what i eat in a day videos where i show you yogurts and i'm gonna make a special dessert in my next what i eat in a day video because i want to try something new i hope you enjoyed the video subscribe if you want to see more videos from me and give the video a like if you enjoyed it and other than that thank you so much for watching and i hope to see my next video Bye!